Hey guys, Moto Machine here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to permaposy your one roll pint. Now, you might be wondering what permaposy is if you've never heard of it before. Uh, what happens is that on the one wheel pint and on the XR and all other one wheels, um, there is a pressure sensor, or two of them to be exact, on the front foot pad. And to get your board to move, you have to depress both. You have to press on both. So, for example, <clears throat> here's the pint. So it's on. See the indicator there? So what happens is there's one sensor on one side. So you press that, you see the blue light go off on one side. If I press it on the other side, the blue light goes off on the other side. Now, in order for the board to start up and start balancing, you have to put pressure on both sides of the front foot pad. So you push both. And then see that? Now it's going. Now you might be wondering why you might want to permaposy. And the reason is, for a lot of people, they have difficulty activating both sensors um, due to a variety of reasons. For instance, uh, my daughter. My daughter is kind of light. Her feet are kind of small. Even with proper shoes, uh, like Vans or other flat-soled shoes, she has difficulty activating both sensors at the same time. So what happens is then you'll just push, push down, and the board just goes straight ahead, doesn't, doesn't turn on, right? Uh, so uh, there are some simple fixes such as little uh, felt dots that you can put on the uh, foot pad on both sides so that it gives it more direct pressure when you're stepping on it um, but permaposy is a way to make both sensors into one sensor so it won't matter which side of the board you're pushing on the front uh, the right sensor or the left sensor it will activate the entire uh, front foot pad sensor and tell the board that you're on the board. Um, it's quite a simple, uh, easy uh, DIY. And I'm going to run you through the steps. All right, to begin, we have to take off the front foot pad. Um, since I have flight fins, uh, I have a different screw for the flight fins, which is a 2.5 millimeter hex. So I put that on the, the toolkit I got. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description and um, put the name of the kit I purchased. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's a very handy little compact kit that I use to travel with. And I've added little pieces to allow me to do everything I need to do with my board. Um, so we'll start off by taking up the flight, the flight fins just on the front. So it's going to be four screws. I'm going to loosen all four before I completely remove it. All right, so fly fins are off, send them off to the side. Now, you're gonna have to remove this front bumper. Um, that will also be your T20 bit. So this screw and this screw right here. We'll go ahead and do that. And those two screws came out. Um, when that happens, your front foot plate comes off. Uh, as you can see, the foot plate has the sensors in the inside of it. So we'll just go ahead and just flip it off to the side. Um, we actually won't really need to remove the front bumper. Um, but 
now that this is off, you can actually slide the front bumper off if you'd like to get more into the controller box. Um, don't need it though. We're gonna go ahead and remove these security screws. Uh, oh yeah, looks like we're gonna need to take off the fender also. So that means <clears throat> other flight fin needs to come off. Other flight fin comes off, so another four screws. And then the fender comes off. Now, if you don't have flight fins, it's obviously just four screws for that fender. So you'll be taking two less screws off if you don't have flight fins. So let's see here. All right, flight fins are off and the fender's off. So you take the fender off. Okay, set that aside. Now, foot pad, just kind of rotate to the side. Um, to take this off, you have to unscrew it. You might need to use a, a pair of pliers or something to, to loosen it up. So I'll just go ahead and do that. And it's uh, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Okay, so it shouldn't be very difficult. Um, it's actually not too hard to turn. So these are plastic. You want to be careful not to damage them. Okay, so there's only a few turns, and then the foot plate comes off. <clears throat> I'm gonna put that aside. The uh, security bit, same size as your T20 but it's only five-sided and it's got a little dimple. And you'll need that to remove the security screws. All right, so same thing. I, I have this bit specifically for my one wheel and you're gonna take off the screws to the top of this cover. And set aside the screws in a safe place so you don't lose them. Okay, so once again, I'm working a nice wide open space, so I'll just go ahead and put it on the ground next to the one wheel. I also take this opportunity to show you you can actually use this bit on a pair of uh, battery operated electric screwdriver or that way the removal goes a little easier if you're lazy so I've got this set of no cries same thing just goes in okay make sure it's going the right direction counterclockwise lefty uh, lefty loosey righty tidy and this speeds up the process a little bit for those of you who don't want to spend a lot of energy using just your hands to, to unscrew these screws okay so you just much easier right If you do use this and you decide to use it to screw the screws back in, I would suggest that you put it to a setting where it doesn't torque too too much. Okay, it's better to be on lower torque, so maybe like a one or two, just to get it tightened down enough, and then then you can tighten it up using your hand. That way you don't uh, end up stripping anything. So. Uh, the cover came off. I went ahead and just left those screws in there, but set those aside. 
set it aside. All right. <clears throat> so now this is important. Um, you don't want to fry your board. So I would suggest unplugging the uh, power to the, um, the board. Um, so it's just a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and pull. Okay. So now the board is not powered. All right, so I'm going to use a little piece of copper wire, okay, and I'm going to use it to connect these two little terminals. Um, you need to put enough solder on the copper wire uh, so that you kind of pre put a little solder on it to prep it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to melt some solder and put it on the, the copper wire here. That's not good. <sighs> Want to make sure you put enough uh, solder on there so that when it melts, it will hold the, the copper <clears throat> uh, the copper wire to your two terminals. I'm going to lay it across the two terminals. Being careful not to touch the th terminal next, the third terminal. And melt the solder and then hold it oh. hold the copper wire in place to let it cool and once it's cool you can unclamp so if you look closely let me see if I can put this down here All right, see how it's connected? Okay, so now now that it's connected, I can snip off the end of this, all right? And, um, and you don't have to worry about anything else, but it's there, it's on. Um, it's stuck between the two points, and uh, it should be good to go. So you can use uh, wire cutters to cut that extra length off. You can leave it there if you'd like. Um, or you can use a little tape or something to tape it so it doesn't jiggle around. Um, I would suggest maybe a little tape just to hold it in place. Um, so if it does come off from striking the board on something, uh, it doesn't uh, damage anything else. All right, so now that uh, we've got the little jumper installed, um, we're going to go ahead and put everything back together just to test it. So you're going to plug the foot pad back in, making sure that this little notch is facing up. Okay, once it's plugged in, you can screw it in using your pliers. very lightly screw it in okay then you're gonna plug it to power okay be careful putting this in Push straight in all right, now that everything's plugged in, it's time to test uh, to make sure that your sensor is working properly. So, what you're gonna do uh, is just turn it on. Okay, so the board is on. All the lights are on, okay? You're gonna push on one side and the light across the entire bar should be blue. All right, so that means that pushing the sensor on one side will register 
is the board being on on both uh, both sensors being depressed. Okay. All right. Go and turn the board off. Okay, and now it's time to button it up. Um, when you put the cover back on, you want to make sure that the little gasket is properly lined up. You don't want to pinch the gasket or else you will um, compromise the seal and the water resistance it will be decreased. So make sure that's all lined up. And you're going to put the cover all the way on as straight as possible so you don't disturb that gasket. Once that's on, you're going to go ahead and put your security screws back in. Um, I'm going to use the electric screwdriver to get it all started, but I'm going to turn it down to the lowest setting. Okay, that's the least amount of torque. You don't want to over torque these screws. So, make sure... Okay, clockwise, righty tighty. Alright, here we go. Just put it in and get these screws started. Okay, you don't want it all the way in. You don't want to get too tight. You want to make sure that <clears throat> that the cover goes on. You don't want to force these. Uh, see how how light it is. On the one setting, it's not going to be completely tight. All it is is just going to make resist, uh, get resistance, and stop. So you don't have, you won't risk um, over torquing these screws with your electric screwdriver. Okay. Continue around with all the screws. All right, once those are all in, I'm gonna go ahead and use the wrench to finish off, just to make sure that it's tight. So I would just go all the way around and cinch them down. That way it kind of uh, pushes the gasket all the way around, okay? So start on one side, just give it a little bit of a turn to be snug, okay? You don't wanna over torque. All right, so that's on. Now we're going to put the foot pad back on. All right, so the foot pad goes on. I would suggest putting these two screws in first before doing the two screws on the, on the other side. But, you know, um, if you have flight fins, okay, you're gonna have to put the fender on and put the four screws in in order to get this done. So, go ahead and put the fender on. All right. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna put my flight fin on and secure these four screws so that the foot pad doesn't come off while I'm um, foot pad doesn't come off while I am turning the board over to put the foot pad on. So put these four screws in. Okay, so just get the four screws started before you tighten. Um, I don't suggest tightening down the screws before you 
tighten it all the way. And you need to get all the screws started. Okay, so now the screw started. I usually tighten down the ones that attach to the fender first. Um, tighten those all the way and then tighten the two on the foot pad. Once again, these don't don't want to over torque these screws. You don't want to strip them. All right, so these four are in. So the flight fin on this side's on. Now I got to put the two screws for the um, the fender and the foot pad back in. So I just tip it back over, and those two screws should be there. You got to switch back to the T20 because these are the stock screws. Okay, so they go in the bumper and just tighten them down and it will hold the foot pad also. Okay, and I get these just snug and then once both of these are snug, then you go ahead and tighten it all the way. Once again, do not over tighten. All right, so that's in. Board back over. All right, turn the board on. Okay, lights are on. And your sensor is good. Watch. So now press on one side. Board goes center. And it's on. All right, well, thanks for watching. Um, if you guys have any comments or any questions please feel free to leave a comment below um, as with any modification to the one wheel uh, anything you do to open up the controller box and change anything will avoid your warranty so proceed carefully slowly make sure that um, you take precautions and as always you assume risk when you try uh, any modifications but um, if you have trouble uh, getting your board to start up uh, this may be the easiest thing for you to do to fix this issue um, once again you can try the little the little felt pieces on uh, the foot pad as well um, I'll go ahead and put uh, some links in the description below if you want to try those first but uh, with this method it's um, not going to give you that issue anymore. You do have to be aware that you will not be able to dismount by lifting your heel anymore. Uh, when you dismount, you'll have to slow down and, and jump off, or you can use simple stop, uh, in order to stop if you want to get off the board. Uh, you have to take your foot completely off both sensors now in order to uh, get the board to shut off. Uh, so once again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like this video. And uh, I will see you in the next video.